action right now. Oh, look at this, beat. He's escaped the carnage. A battle of survival here in this first moto, and he has come out on top. World-class racetrack spread over four different states around the country, and it all comes down to this. We're at Queensland Motor Park in the Sunshine State for the eighth and final round of the Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores, and today we crown three champions. Hello, everyone. I'm Lee Hogan alongside former Supercross superstar Danny Ham. Danny, welcome. We have got sunshine at the moment, but we had close to 100 mil of rain this week. The track yesterday, it was hectic, and you got to have a bit of a look, didn't you? Yeah, look, they've had a lot of rain leading into this one, but the crew here has done an exceptional job to get the track to what we see today. It dried up during the day through qualifying practicing, and it is set to get some incredible racing underway today. Now, the tug-of-war battle between Jed Beaton and Kyle Webster continues right the way down to this final round, but I tell you what, that second moto last weekend from Jed Beaton was impressive. Very impressive. We saw Jed have a mistake in moto number one last week. It looked like the tables had turned. It was all going to swing to Honda. However, Jed bounced back. He really put up a massive fight, grabbed the win, dominant force again, and that there's going to bring some confidence into it. However, Webster has been so consistent all year long, just knocking up all those points, getting himself a big advantage going into this one. 14 points. It is not done, though. This, at this point of the day. Yeah, there's a big 14-point gap, but I tell you what, the cards have not been played. A crash yesterday for Kyle Webster on board the HRC Honda means he has a bit of a damaged wrist. He has been secured and released from race safe to be able to race. So watch this space. It's going to be interesting, Danny. Incredibly high-speed crash, too, and it's very evident that he was holding that wrist. A little bit of a, a pain in the hand, so let's see how this one plays out. All right, it's time to go down now to the third member of our commentary team with Cam Williams. Maximus Purvis, fastest qualifier in this one, mate. That looked like a hell of a lap. Yeah, no, I definitely felt good and um, got a good lap in, yeah. Last weekend in, in Gimpy, you were really good. Just looked like maybe the fitness wasn't quite there after some time off the bike. Yeah, have um, been off the bike for another nine months and um, now back and um, feeling good on the bike and, yeah, see how we go. Fantastic, best of luck. We're going to shoot now over to Danny Ham. We have Jed Beaton here with us. Not a bad start to the weekend, pretty solid in qualifying. Got pipped at the post there in the Super Pole, but how are you feeling going into this? Uh, yeah, I feel really good. I mean, uh, sort of gelled with the track yesterday and it's, a, it's even a little bit better today. So um, yeah, feeling really good and uh, looking forward to getting into it. It's funny how the uh, emotions and, and the, the, the outlook of the, the day can swing so quickly with uh, Webster having a bit of a crash. That's got to have uh, eased up a little bit of pressure on yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any pressure, to be fair. Um, I'm the one uh, hunting, so, I mean, it's, um, yeah, it is motocross and uh, it's what we do, so it's all part of it. But, uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to this race and uh, trying to get out there and uh, get a win. This guy's ready to win. Cam? Down here with Kyle Webbs of a 96. Mate, if, every, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's it. Um, bit of a rough get-off yesterday, but we'll work through it today. Um, Two good motors, all we have to do. I have to ask the question, mate, the hand itself, how is it? It's a little bit tender. Uh, it's not actually too sore, it's more just pretty swollen, but it'll be fine, I think. Um, there's not much we can do now other than just get out there and get into it, really. Hopefully adrenaline kicks in and uh, we just get those laps done. Get the laps done on pain you can deal with tomorrow when you've got a championship under your belt, right? Exactly, that's the plan. All right, Danny. Well, great to catch up with some of our big hitters in the MX1 class down on the starting line. And speaking of big hitters, our very own Danny Ham and the legend himself, Brett Metcalf, got to check out this QMP track. Let's take a look. The final hit out for 2024. And I've got something a little special today because we have the legend, Brett Metcalf, going to show me the way around this track. And I tell you what, it is an absolute beast as we get set to launch off the gate here. Oh, a little bit of traction. Those Michelin tyres absolutely ripping off the start. Again, the dirt start is going to play against these riders. Into turn number one we go, and already we start to see a lot of different lines 
going to the left hand here of Metcalf for the inside. Let's run the outside. Very boggy as we went through that corner down the first of our drop-offs and the little gullies will follow Medi into this one up to the inside. Oh, whoa, that back end stepping out sideways. Around this long left hand with plenty of momentum. We're going to need that speed for this upcoming step up. Base of the hill, plenty of ruts. Up and over, oh, a little bit long. Oh, oh man, don't like landing in ruts like that. As we go through the right here, off the Michelin drop off and down to the very back part of the track. Many to the inside, I'll run the outside here. Let's see how this one plays out. Into these rollers, off the back here. Nice and smooth run that time. And then into this big step up. Let's hold it wide open. We'll see if we can get it on the opening lap. A little bit short. The 250 just got enough power. Our biggest run here is through the gully and up to the top of the hill. Probably the fastest part of the circuit before we go into this right and then into the left hander. Now only one nice inside line here at the moment. Plenty more lines to form up. Down off this drop, our second set of rollers. These ones are very sharp. Back end, stepping out just slightly there. We go across the top here and then down to another drop in elevation. We saw a lot of different lines down here last year. Well, I'm Eddie's going to the outside. Let's run it up the inside here. Let's see what we can do. See if we pass in here. Put it to the inside. Oh, man, that was close. Two lines coming together and nowhere near enough speed to even get that step up. Through the right hand here, down into the last turn. And this one here has been very boggy. Watching practice earlier on. One last shot at it before the finish line to make that pass. So not even the support of Brett Metcalf, factory rider out on the track this week would help me. The track is difficult. With the rain we've had this week, there is a lot of bog holes out there. The ruts haven't formed up fantastic at this point. However, it's going to get better and it's going to open up a lot of different lines come race time. So keep an eye on it, plenty of options, a lot of difficult conditions. And that there is this week's Michelin Track Preview. So let's have a look at the MX-1 lineup. Maximus Purvis was the quickest. Cloud Gibbs also very quick in front of Beaton Crawford. Wilson Todd, that's a good spot. As to Zach Watson, Cole Webster, Caleb Ward and Todd Waters. Joel Evans, Hamish Harwood, Brett Metcalf, you just had your lap there with Danny Luke Zielinski, Liam Jackson, Hayden Melros, he was back with us last weekend, back once again here for the final round. Cooper Holroyd, Andrew Wilkes, Jacob Sweet and Benny Novak. So Lee, let's talk about exactly the setup that we have in front of us right now. We've already heard from Daka, we just need to win. Beaton needs to win. If Beaton wins, then where can Webster finish if it was to go that way in both motos and still re retain that uh, top spot? Okay, so the mathematics, I guess if Jed Beaton wins both motos, two fourth placings is what Kyle Webster needs to get. It will end up tied on points, but Kyle Webster will win on a countback. Now, the way the countback works in a series is not just the highest place rider in the final moto, it's who has got the most amount of victories throughout the championship bid, and that would go to Kyle Webster. So in order for Jed Beaton to win, he needs Kyle Webster to get a fourth and a fifth, and then it's his, no shadow of a doubt, not worrying about count back of points or whatever, but we have got two motos, 25 minutes plus a lap to determine that. And we've seen already in qualifying just how close the top 10 riders are. So this is not a given yet for Webster. If he is to get fourth place in these races, he is going to have to push through a hell of a lot of pain and come away with the ride of his life because it's all in his hands at the moment as we get set to get the first for MX1 Moto number one underway. Beaten to the inside. Webster just outside the box. Do we see a green bike at the front? Jason down. Webster with a good jump as to the beaten. That looks to be, is that Purvis with the whole shot? Luke Cloud up the inside. Both riders next to each other. It's Cloud that comes through in the lead. And it's that Webster, Webster straight up into second place. Wow, what a start from Webster. And beaten is back there at about eight. Okay, so this scene is set. 
what a warrior effort in this early stage for Kyle Webster to jump straight up into second place. That's a lot of adrenaline going on. Massive move there for Beaton to the inside. Grabs two positions in that one turn. It is all about Jed Beaton, what he can do from here. Sits in behind Wilson Todd right now as Luke Clout leads him through Thor turn for the first time. Webster, it almost looks like he does not even have an injury at the moment. He is riding so well at the moment. Like we said, pure adrenaline. The WP hole shot to Luke Clout. And he has come to play today. Clout was one of the fastest in our pole shootout a little earlier today. He jumped up there into second place right at the end. Webster, the best he could do was eighth. And right now sits there in second place. Maximus Purvis put down the lap of a lifetime, putting himself into the number one spot for that pole shootout. So keep an eye on him as he comes to grips with the track in these opening laps. So Luke Clout from Kyle Webster, Max Purvis, Wilson Todd, Hamish Harwood, Jed Beaton back there in sixth place, then Todd Waters. And these are our big hitters. The number one 53 machine of Hamish Harwood there. Jed Beaton trying his best to get around Harwood. A little bit of water thrown down during our lunch break, and they have taken away all those brake bumps, Lee, that we saw earlier on in the day. So a little bit of track work. There is some here in this right-hander as well, as this is the one that funnels back onto the start straight. Can Beaton get himself a good drive up to the inside of Harwood? Beautiful, innovative line up the inside there. Is beaten go oh, a little bit sideways, close to tagging the rear end there. Wow. Just as we say that, Webster all over the back of Clout. I'm impressed with the way Webster is riding at the moment. He has certainly held the cards close to his chest because we saw the crash. We saw his laps after the crash, and there was no pace put into it at all. Whether he was just monitoring it, taking it easy, and just going to let it all hang out here. But I tell you what, he's got some pressure at the moment from Purvis. Yeah, Purvis can really be a thorn in Webster's side at the moment because if he manages to pass Webster before Webster passes Cloud, and Purvis is so fast through this section. How was the speed up the inside there? It was on rails. So Purvis moves up here. And the other scene here, Lee, is that if uh, Beaton is able to get to the lead from here, that puts Webster in fourth. He is in a very dangerous position at the moment. He sure is, but... He still currently has beaten two positions behind him. Have a look at the pressure yes. and the speed from Jed Beaton. So Beaton looks to the inside here of Wilson. Almost there. He's pushed his way through. So this shows Beaton is ready to bring the fight. Jed Beaton is on a mission at the moment. And like we said, Max Purvis making that pass and relegating Webster back a position, and now it's going to be Purvis that puts the pressure onto Luke Clout. Down around to complete lap two, Waters and Hamish Harwood somehow both riders into the same run as Luke Clout runs a little wide. Purvis looks to the inside, great switch up there, puts himself on the inside, but Clout doesn't want to have a part of it. What a battle we're seeing at the head of the pack here. Purvis to the inside again. He'll make the wow. pass this time. How well read was that lead? That was incredible. He is on rails at the moment. Now, the thing is, and as we saw before, when Cam Williams was talking to him, mentioned about fitness. How is Purvis's fitness going to go as we get towards the end of this race here? And have a look. Webster has already got company with Beaton. And they are still not too far behind Clout. So, watch for this. Beautiful battle here. Purvis pulls it out wide, but then switches back to the inside here. Very well read. Beautiful over-under move. Clout could do nothing about that. That's how to do that first turn. That was amazing. Again, our leader eclipsed his time. Quickest again, quickest of the race as we see Waters laying on the ground. 151.5 for our leader. 151.8 for Clout. So Clout is going with him, but here it is. This is the battle we came to see. First and second in the championship. 14 points the gap. Jed Beaton tries to set up a pass on Webster around the outside. Can he make it stick? Yes. Oh, that was close. That wow. was not an intentional move, but man, those lines came together very quickly. That Whoa. was almost... Okay, so... Okay, major yellow flags being waved here. Off the track, just off the side. I think that one's a, uh, a 
previous lap thing. So McManix uh, with that rider, which is great to see. There is Cloud going with our race leader, Webster, back there in fourth. Now, at what point do we see Webster go, OK, I only need to be here and manage the rest of this race? Look, I think he has to keep doing what he's doing, and he would know that two fourth placings, no matter what, wins him the championship. It's in Jed Beaton's hands now. Talk about stress, anxiety, adrenaline, all bottled up in one. The man on the right of the screen there, Craig Dack, he'd be getting told information direct to those headphones. What do you think he's hearing at the moment, Danny? Well, at the moment, he's saying he needs to pick up the pace right now because these two boys are stretching it out. However, we do have a clear track. Yeah. Well, that's another awful spot to be laying down. Pick up my monster beat. Monster energy helmet there. Yeah, the rear fender just been snapped off. Yeah, after a big hit last weekend, and as you mentioned, Zach Watson on the Rising Motorsports Husqvarna machine. He had a bit of a look to the right-hand side down the straight, but it was the wrong side because Crawford was up the other side. Once again, trying to execute a pass, looking very similar to Jed Beaton and how he set one up, railing around the outside here. That inside line that Zach Watson's on has just got itself a little bit of a hook. It slows you down, and a pass easily made there for Nathan Crawford. Kyle Webster on board the Boost Mobile Honda. He's doing everything he can to keep tabs on Jed Beaton and hoping that Beaton doesn't leapfrog the next two riders in front of him. Well, at the moment, he's looking pretty comfortable. And like you said, he can see where Beaton is at the moment. So while Beaton's only one place in front of him, he has absolutely nothing to worry about. But I tell you what... Whoa! Oh, no! Massive end for Antuck of the front wheel. Now, we have seen almost crashes going into that first turn all weekend there. It is such a treacherous part of the track, and it has bit Maximus Purvis hard. Wow, I was just about to say how incredibly fast this guy was running, and there's still no doubt in that, but wow, what a turn of events for him. Watch the front wheel here, and Tuck's just going into a braking bump, only ever so slightly, but it's enough just to rip it completely sideways. Bang! Yeah, that happened. He wouldn't have even known that was happening until he was flying through the air. Now, he was seated in a seating position, ready to tip it into the first turn. He would have thought that's business as usual. That's bread and butter stuff for Kiwis. Wow. So, that there helps Kyle Webster because Beaton now has the chance to go and battle it out for the lead. But if Beaton gets there, Webster still sits in third. That is not enough points for him to really close it down, and that'll allow a bit more breathe room for Webster in moto number two. Incredible performance at the moment. Penrod Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstore. The battle for first and second continues. It is still Luke Cloud on board the Empire Kawasaki. Jet beat. Oh, goes around the outside. Where did that come from? Thank you very much. That was an amazing run around the outside. Beaten is doing everything he needs to do to battle out this championship as he puts Luke Clout now into second. Watch for the outside line here. Sets it up, squares this particular corner and then just continues outside. There was nothing there for him to turn off. There was just grippy Play-Doh. He made his own line through there. That was absolutely brilliant. 8.4 seconds, the gap from Webster. And then we've got a further four and a half seconds from Webster back to Wilson Todd, who is also the teammate of Webster, and you would happen to think is not going to do anything stupid to put Webster in jeopardy at all. As we see Wilson Todd here, another great ride by him after coming back from injury. However, he is about to have a massive battle on his hands with Kirk Gibbs right in behind him. And Gibbs was one of the fastest in our pole shootout earlier on. He is always quick at the end of the motos. But what a great battle we've got here between the factory Honda HRC rider of Wilson Todd. A welcome return last weekend after being out for so long, but he is coming under siege 
from Kirk Gibbs and Nathan Crawford, who have got their own little battle going on for the championship. Yeah, and a mistake just there for Gibbs. Big foot dab going through that right-hander on the outside. Just hit a bump that he wasn't quite anticipating. Drops down into the Fox Gully here. Big straight line ruts. Nice hop over. He cleared it perfectly that time. Well, Todd is right there, but the Todd's going to be put in a massively hard position right now because Gibbs is right there also. If he allows Gibbs to get past, then Gibbs will have that chance to make the pass here on Webster. What does he do here, Lee? Look, he is back there. He doesn't want to get too close at the oh, moment. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, sideways for Kyle Webster. Oh, Gibbs almost coming together. Kirk Gibbs almost making the pass on Wilson Todd. This is some no oh. one. What a forceful move. Wow. So that changes everything at the moment for Webster. Webster needs to pick it up. One more lap to go. And he has an incredibly hard charging Kirk Gibbs at the moment. Todd can do nothing right now. It's out of his hands, and that was uh, it was a beautiful passing move from Kirk Gibbs. Let's watch again, as we can see on the left-hand side of the screen. Comes up the inside. Boom, a bit of connection there. That definitely caught Wilson Todd unawares. So do we see Wilson Todd rebound here and try and make that pass back? Well, we do already. There we go. So Wilson Todd back in front. This is going to help Webster and Team Honda massively. That extra point that Webster will get right now is a bit of breathing room going into moto number two. Well, we've still got a whole lap to go. Jed Beaton on board the CDR Yamaha Monster Energy Machine still with a 5.8 second gap over Empire Kawasaki's Luke Clout in second place. A further 12 seconds back to Kyle Webster and then just 2.2 back to Wilson Todd and the battle between Wilson and Kirk Gibbs continues. Crawford, unfortunately, has dropped off the back of this battle that has been going on for a couple of laps. Here is the replay. So, Gibbs to the inside. Todd, beautiful square up from the very outside. Does he give him a little knock? No, relatively He's polite. Pretty polite, but he did run to the very outside and left zero room for Gibbs to go back. So, our race leader towards the finish line. He had one goal to do this weekend, win both races. And right now, he has done everything right. He's put himself into a position that is going to achieve this. He's had to work for it, but he will come close. If he continues like this, grab the most points in race number one. Out of the easy lift right hander. The first piece of the puzzle together for Jed Beaton. You can't do any more than that. And he will take victory as the checkered flag comes out. And a nice fist pump there for the CDR Monster Energy rider. Incredible job here in second place. And a little bit of a knock of the head there. And a not too bad job. Congratulations. Great effort there for Luke Clout. And here we have it. You can't do much more than that in very tough conditions. Kyle Webster holds on for third place and minimizes the damage from a hard charge in Wilson Todd. And Kirk Gibbs was ready to pounce. We'll try to figure out. I don't want to make any, uh, any rash decisions here, any mash, rash calls. Fifth place. Fifth place. Let's yep. take a look at the Thor results. MX1 Moto 1, Jed Beaton with the win from Luke Clout. Kyle Webster in third. Wilson Todd in fourth place and Kirk Gibbs in fifth. Crawford manages to hold on for sixth place. Harwood, Watson, Evans, Waters are your top 10. Metcalf back there in 11. Cody Shatt there, 21st place. Kai Orchard, Joel Sigliano, Levi Sayer and Riley Stevens. Wow, the first piece of the puzzle, like you said, Lee, has been put down on the board, and it is Jed Beaton that is going to be the winner in this race, collecting the most points that he can and doing everything right in this championship battle. Let's head down to camp. Jed Beaton, the, obviously the goal with that one was to get the win. Kyle Webster sits in third place. This ain't over yet. <laughs> no, it's not over yet, that's for sure. I mean, uh, we're going to keep fighting until the very last moment, so... Um, yeah, got off to a really bad start that one. I need to uh, figure that out for the next one. And uh, I think it should make my race a little bit easier. I mean, I come through the pack from deep. So, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm riding good. The track's pretty technical. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to the second one.
Gentlemen, that's actually a smile on Jed Beaton face this week and after a win. Very exciting stuff. Kurt Gibbs, Gas Gas Racing, 18 points out of third place in this championship, mate. And you're coming home with a wet sail. What's it going to take to get this one done? Uh, just concentrating on myself. Obviously, you know, if you start to complicate things, it uh, probably gets worse. So um, just concentrating on myself, trying to put my best foot forward and, uh, like you said, try and uh, keep that momentum rolling and, um, yeah, hopefully uh, be up the front with those guys and um, hopefully it unfolds in my favour. A lot of experience in this championship, obviously winning it yourself, so that's got to also play in your favour. Nathan Crawford, effectively a rookie in this class, so all those years and all that heartbreak over the years really set you in a good position to get this done. Yeah, I, I feel pretty relaxed. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, like you said, I'm a bit more of a veteran of the class and uh, just feel like I'm uh, just in a good place. So, you know, no pressure really. Um, he has obviously that spot to lose and I have sort of only things to gain. So, yeah, just trying to put my best foot forward, like I said, and just keep moving forward and um, hopefully be at the point again. Racing's different now, obviously, Jess and your little girl. Does it, does it make much difference to your life overall in training? It has, obviously, having it during the season made it quite hectic, but um, it's awesome. My wife's been amazing. Obviously, they, they take a massive role, and, uh, you know, hats off to all the super mums out there. It's uh, yeah, something else. I mean, you don't understand until you have one. So, um, But, yeah, she, my little girl's awesome. She's doing so good, and, uh, you know, it's awesome to come home and uh, see the smile on her face. She starts smiling. So um, really loving it, and, uh, yeah, just in a good, good spot right now. Fantastic, Kirk. Best of luck. Thanks very much. Absolute legend in the sport of motocross here in Australia. And we've said it a few times this season, almost in career best form. And he is just like a fine red wine, just getting better with age. Let's take a look at the Thor lineup. MX1, Moto2, Maximus Purvis there was our fastest qualifier. Luke Clout, Kirk Gibbs, Jed Beaton, Nathan Crawford. Wilson tied after a good performance. Moto number one, Watson, Webster, Ward and Waters. They were the qualifying positions. Joel Evans, Hamish Harwood, Brett Metcalf there. Great to have a chat with him and a big sayonara to him at the end of this race. Luke Zielinski, Liam Jackson. Jackson actually half separated his shoulder in practice. So just to be out there on the line is a massive performance from him on the Elliott Brothers bike. Uh, Mel Ross, Holroyd, Wilch and Sweet and Novak are your 20. Robbie Marshall, local Queensland rider. Great to see him out there. Sieg Award, Cody O'Lone, Jason West and Cody Shutt. That is our Thor MX1 lineup in the final moto for our Pro MX Championship for season 2024. This is going to be a big one. Who is going to come out on top? A couple of slaps of the chest there for Jed Beat. Does he have what it takes? It is certainly on the cards to get a race win here and go double victory in the final round, but it is all in Kyle Webster's hands. Does he have a top five in him here to wrap up the championship? Well, a bad start is absolutely going to test Kyle Webster in this one. Do we see a big start by Maximus, per uh, Maximus Purvis? Can he potentially get up there and upset that win or will beat and get it the final time for 2024 for MX1 underway? Right, let's see. It looks like Kawasaki got out. Good news oh. that Kyle Webster coming up trumps with a whole shot. And was that yes. Jed Beaton up the inside as well? Yes, Beaton is right there as well. So that's exactly what Webster needed to do. He can take his time now and try and ride himself into this race. He can afford to lose some spots no further back than fifth place. Clout is there. Waters gives. Wilson is also there. Now, of course, it goes without saying, but neither of these two big hitters can afford any unnecessary silly little crashes in these early stages of this race because the amount of positions that you lose is just devastating. What a showing we're seeing here. Riding injured, Kyle Webster. The WP whole shot award, of course, going to that rider, the 96 machine of Kyle Webster. Back end just stepping out sideways a little bit there. And Lee, you have to think with the hand injury that he has, that this here, obviously, the roughest part of the day, but there's a lot of choppy little bumps out there. They would probably be a little harder to deal with than those big, nice rolling whoops that they could be a little bit more calculated on. Well, we saw it at the start of the Thor MX1 Moto 1. 
where Kyle Webster was just running off adrenaline, but near the end of the race, you could tell the adrenaline had worn off. Whatever painkillers he was on, whether it was anti-inflammatories, a bit of Voltar, and it's only speculation, I have no idea. He might be mad-dogging it and going absolutely nothing for all I know, but it looked like whatever was getting him through was starting to wear off and he was feeling the pain. Into the left hand for the first time. It's exactly what Webster needed to do. Cloud positions himself very well in third place. There is Gibbs. Whereabouts is Crawford? He is back in 13th place at the moment. So we'll keep an eye on that because between Gibbs and Crawford, that's a big gap. That could affect the overall after today as well in the championship. Max Purvis, we see a long way back now, so it wasn't the start that he would have hoped for. Zach Watson there, a couple of positions behind. Here's the uh, battle for the lead, which almost looked like a change of the lead as Jed Beaton trying to set up a passing move here on Kyle Webster. You can throw a blanket over these two charges. I'm impressed with the way Webster's riding, but I am also amazed that he's putting up such a fight at the moment. Yeah, did you see that look yes. over the right shoulder? Yeah, huge look, almost to say, just go past, and let's just ride the race out, but he's still right there, holding on. Well, I think, I'm hoping that, you, well, there you see, like a nice clean pass from Jed Beat, and sooner or later, a bit of common sense had to prevail with, with Kyle Webster, didn't it? How about the roost there that Kyle Webster was copying? He needs to be careful that Luke Cloud doesn't take this opportunity to pounce because if it starts unraveling, there's a bunch of riders not too far behind. I feel Cloud is going to make the pass right here. You can hear the bells there just on the side, the crowd getting in behind. Webster trying to keep him moving. I think the pass will come with Cloud and Waters is right there too, as to Gibbs. So there you're five. He can't go any further back than that. But luckily for him, it's a bit of a gap back past that point. I think at the moment, it's all about having cool heads prevail here. He needs to try to throw a hook onto the back of Jed Beat, try to get a toe, pick up a line or two, but not get too far out of his comfort zone for what is comfortable for him because Jed Beat needs to try to ride off into the distance and to try to get Kyle Webster out of his comfort zone to try to force some kind of a mistake. 156.9 for beating that last lap around 159.457 all after that. So there is five riders actually Wilson Todd Luckily for Webster, Wilson Todd is that sixth place at the moment. If he is to get six, then the championship will go to beat. But right now, it's not showing signs, and he's going to move back there. Watch for the pass here. First attempt around the outside. Webster, that was a very relaxed look over the shoulder. It's almost, and he's still yeah. again, it's almost like Beaton wanted to stay behind him and keep that pressure on him for a little bit longer. Yeah, sneaky little look over the shoulder, and then here we go. There was the pass executed and well done by Jed Beaton as Kyle Webster slots in behind and tries to get in tow to try to pull himself away from the hard charging Luke Clown back there in third place who continues to sit in there. That is just such a brilliant roost shot there. You could see the angle of the sun. You could almost feel the pain from Luke Cloud. <laughs> we certainly could watching that. Been there and experienced that before. Cloud, though, is trying everything again. Press with Webster. I think he's just going to ride as deep into this battle as he can at this pace before he then settles down and just lets the rest of the racers do what they're going to do. Pass to the inside here, possibly from Cloud, but that bike dances around all over the place at the moment. the Penrod Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores. The current championship points provisional Kyle Webster 386 back to 382 for Jed Beat. So a little bit of room to play with, but he doesn't want to lose too many spots. A little bit of a mistake there with Jed Beat and that bike kicking a little bit out to the side. He wouldn't have even felt that he is on that much of a mission at the moment. So Maximus Purvis is now the rider in sixth place. He is moving pretty quick at the moment with a 156-1. He sits behind Waters, so this will be interesting to see how far 
Webster moves back. He is going to have to be strong so he doesn't fall into the grips of those two riders, Waters and Purvis. No, he can't afford to do that. We still have 16 minutes plus a lap. There's an absolute eternity. And like we said earlier on, with Jake Cannon in the MX3 class, you can't afford to be thinking about the championship yet. You need to concentrate on the job at hand. Kirk Gibbs trying to go around the outside of Kyle Webster as Webster loses another spot. So, two more to go. This is going to get very tight leading into the tail end of this race. Can Webster hold on to it for another 15 full minutes plus a lap? Or will we see two more riders get up there? Well, this is where the yep. fight needs to come out. 384 versus 382. Now, ladies and gentlemen, bear in mind they can finish equal on points, and if they do, Kyle Webster will still win based off a count back with the most amount of individual wins throughout the year. So in order for Jed Beaton to win the championship, he needs to beat him by points. Exactly, two more places. One more place won't do it if Webster drops back one more, but two more places will. And we can see in the background, the Waters and Purvis are about to come unto a battle amongst themselves. Water's looking very good. Has shaken off the charge just a little bit there from Purvis after a few mistakes. Oh, Gibbs, what a ride to the inside. Gets himself up another place. That puts him at 297 compared to Crawford's 299, who has not yet made a pass, still sits in 13th. If a rider is to make a pass on Crawford, then he will lose that spot overall. Gibbs, this is an incredible ride from Kirk Gibbs. This is close to his best ride of the season. He works his way across the top here. Clout with a big kick off the top of that jump. Here is the setup. Beautiful drive to the inside. And Clout has nowhere to go. He tries to go back to the inside, but he's just not close enough right there to make a rebound challenge. Back to the racing. Oh. And Kirk Gibbs, what have we oh. had? An did, issue. Sorry, did you just see that? Clout actually went up the edge of the track and almost crashed. I don't know what happened there. That was a really weird situation. Let's head down to Cam with Dakar. Craig, Dak, how's the fingernails? Oh, quite a hell of a moto. I'm too old for this. <laughs> Mate, if, as it sits right now, well, Jed's in the lead, which is what he had to do. And if Purvis passes uh, Webster, which he's right on to him, that puts Webster in fifth place, if my calculations are right. So we've got an equally, equal championship with, with Webster and Beat at that point. I guess the million dollar question here is there's one Yamaha from CDR, but we've got Maximus Purvis there from WBR. Is there team orders in play here? There's absolutely not team orders, but we've spoken about it. And uh, well, when you say team orders, if it, if we don't want him to get in the way. And that's uh, a mutual thing between WBR and us. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, back whoa. to the boys on top. Yeah, so Purvis just made the pass by apologies, but he bumped Webster on the way through, and Webster got a little out of control. He's back at it right now. Some hearts would have been in their mouths on Team Honda, but wow, that was close. Yeah, that was a close call there, and Purvis sets him, his sights oh. on Luke Clout. And there's a bit of a gap now back to Kyle Webster. Can he rebound? He needs to compose himself and get back into a rhythm. Clout riding very strong as well at the moment. Purvis has been incredible to watch here today. Mistake though, in that turn, lost a little bit of ground. And it almost looked like Purvis there mid-race had made some mistakes and actually lost toe, lost speed, but he has managed to turn it back around. And once again, he has just lost a little bit of momentum and he finds himself about halfway between Clout and Webster as Clout continues to ride a terrific race here in the top three position. To the right hander, we have 436. Have a look at this moment just here. Oh yeah, the front wheel tucking and then down to the inside. Now this was just an aggressive pass. There was nothing malice in that at all, I don't believe. It was just taking that line away. Through the Thor right hander, second last time. He is closing down fast on purpose. And you've got to wonder if Purvis is feeling that heat, feeling the energy levels just being sapped out of him 
from a couple of hot days here in the sunshine. He's coming off injury, and we knew how fast he was, but an interview with Cam Williams earlier on in the day highlighted the fact that fitness may be a factor. The intensity that he had in the opening laps of this race, and even in race number one, surely sapped some of that energy out. So our timer has gone down to zero. The next time that Jed Beaton crosses the finish line, it will be the final lap. Webster still very strong there. In fifth place right now, Waters 6.23 seconds behind. You don't need to do that right now, Kyle. Yeah, watch out for that kicker on the jump. That's the last thing that you need to look over to the right. Just hoping for some kind of insight as to a change of position for Kyle Webster. Beaten though, looking so good on the mic here today. In his mind and the team's mind, there was no one going to beat this guy on track for the final round here at QMP. As he makes his way up the hill once again, into the shadows, that sun blasting the eyes of the riders. There is the other contender. Webster in fourth, sorry, fifth place, my apologies. Behind Purvis, and Purvis looks like he's putting on another charge again to close down on Cloud, but Webster is right there. I think Cole Webster needs to uh, get a little bit of logic going on here and realize, hey, there's nothing too fancy that I need to do here other than, of course, watch out for lapped riders. And if I was him, I'd be staying well and truly behind Max Purvis. Yeah, after that little bump and run that we saw earlier on, we know that Purvis is ready to put up the fight for this position. To make their way across the top through the Honda ride for the final time. Deep in some lap riders. Webster looking very good as this rider makes his way around to the checkered flag right now. He's got plenty of time on his hand. Nine seconds lead over everyone else. Dropping down into this left-hander that's caught a lot of riders out so many times today. Up and over this towards the finish line. Here he's got one corner to go. The number 14 machine. Jed Beaton has done everything right today. Put it on the line. Picks up two wins. Well, what a series campaign it has been for Kyle Webster on board the Boost Mobile HRC Honda. Ten individual moto wins, five overall round victories, and your 2024 Pro MX champion in the Thor MX1 class. Take a bow, Kyle Webster. What an incredible achievement and completing a dominant series for Honda winning all four classes. Have a look at Kyle Webster. Can you imagine the relief? Ross Beaton, have a listen to that Honda. Let's get those goggles off. Have a look at the eyes. Ecstatic. Congratulations from Luke Cloud here. The moment, it's just all getting taken in from Kyle Webster. On board the Boost Mobile Honda HRC machine. The performance to get that done today with the hand injury that he sustained yesterday, it certainly looked like he was going to be really struggling, especially after we saw qualifying today in that Super Pole where he could only manage eighth place. He's managed to do it. Well, the emotion there between Kyle Webster and his lovely wife. Amazing job, incredible job. As we see the overview here, the red team, they just want to be in there, a part of this, and I'm sure it won't be too long until we see an invasion of this team. But before we get to that, we really need to get down and have a chat with this guy. Let's head down to camp. Kyle Webster, ladies and gentlemen here at QMP. How about a bunch of noise for your Thor MX124 champion, Kyle Webster! I gotta say to you, Kyle, pain is temporary and glory lasts forever, mate. It looks to me like you just rode the pain through in that one, huh? Yeah, it was uh that was hard, honestly. From about the second lap I couldn't feel my hand anymore and the track is no good for that, you know, like it. Oh, I'm lost for words. I know that was really tight and I'm pretty sure that we may have tied on points for the year, but I feel like this year's just been like that. So I'm, st I'm stoked to come out on top. I don't even know what to say other than just obviously a massive thank you to everyone in our corner. 
your rave, my partner, my family. <laughs> the maker of cheap champagne. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. just everyone, everyone in my corner and a huge shout out to my mechanic Matt, my yeah, my family. They've come to nearly every round this year and that's a first and my partner, just everyone on the team, it's it's a huge effort and a big special thanks to John Park and the Race Safe crew today for getting me through because uh yeah, I was I was a little bit unsure yesterday, so Oh, I'm lost. Mate, it actually came down to race wins. So you guys were tied on points and it came down to race wins. And as a result of you getting more race wins for the champion, mate, it's still pretty special. It doesn't matter how you get it done. For the rest of us, super exciting to watch, man. I can't imagine what it was like on the bike. Oh, yeah, it was... Uh, I had no idea going in that was the case. And I knew better than fifth was ideal. But if it had to be fifth today, it had to be fifth. And uh, it just it just shows those races throughout the year actually do count. So, um I'm stoked, honestly. I heard, I'm a bit lost for words. I'm going to leave it with this one. One more time, everybody here at QMP. How about some noise for your Thor MX1 2024 champion, Carl Webster? Well, there we have it. Carl Webster on board the Boost Mobile Honda machine as the rest of the team come in. The champagne being sprayed. And that is as good as it gets. His mum, Cole's mum, in there on the far right of the screen we saw before. Mum and dad have been travelling around the countryside. There she is. There's dad. The whole family in there. Cole's mechanic in the background there, Craig Bolton. Just such a team effort. Great to see Wilson Todd in there. John Park, the physio who did the... Uh, did all of, the, all of the medical stuff yesterday to make sure that he was in good enough stead. And there we see Yuri Konsky. It has all come to fruition for this team for 2024. What a day, what an experience for all of these guys. <laughs> Fantastic performance and Kyle truly tested today after such a huge crash yesterday. Let's look at the official results of Moto number two for the Thor MX1. And it was Beaton that did win this one with Kirk Gibbs, Luke Clout, of course, Max Purvis, massive performance as well. Webster Waters, Wilson Todd, Caleb Ward, we didn't get to mention some privateers there. Zach Watson and Hamish Harwood are your 10. Back in 11th place, Nathan Crawford, Brett Metcalf there back in 12th place. Joel Evans in 13th, Luke Zelensky, Cody O'Lone. All right, let's head back down to camp. Gas Gas Factory Racing rider Kirk Gibbs, mate. Great round, third place overall, but the racing up front looked really tight and quite tough. <clears throat> yeah, that last race especially, um, it was so blind over the back there. I didn't even jump that uh, top jump after about the first two laps, so... I just didn't want to risk it. <laughs> um, I felt like I was in a pretty good position and I could have held it. So, um, you know, hats off to Jed going 1-1 and congrats to Kyle, you know, awesome championship. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, four podiums for me, so it's probably the best I've had in a while. So um, I'm stoked. Um, thanks to everyone, my wife, my beautiful baby, my parents that always come, Scott, Ford, um, Ga the whole Gas Gas crew, um, Declan, Kyle, Jordy, um, Liam, everyone. Just It takes a massive effort and... Um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without any of them. Congratulations, third on the day. Thanks very much. Just going to cruise on over here and find Mr. Luke Clout. Second on the day to all in the Empire Kawasaki. Let's move up here and get your bike and shot, shall we? Mate, um, in terms of your day overall today, really, really positive. You started great last week, but this week you really got through with it. Yeah, it only took me eight rounds to get on the podium, but... Um... You know, obviously coming across from, you know, CDR to, to Empire was a big jump for me. And, uh, you know, we've been working hard all year and uh, finally got myself comfortable in the last two rounds. It's, it's taken a long time, but uh, hats off to the whole team. They've uh, been working their ass off and I appreciate it. You know, I've been uh, pretty demanding with uh, what I wanted, but they've delivered. And, um, you know, I'm happy I can deliver them with a the podium. And, uh, you know, even last weekend being, you know, back in the fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy. yeah, I'm happy. All goes well for a good Supercross season, doesn't it? Yeah, look, um, you know, obviously vocal that I love Supercross. So for me to trend in, you know, that upward direction coming into Supercross, I'm excited. I've got my start sorted. Uh, I feel comfortable on the bike, happy with my team and bring on Supercross. Congratulations, second place today, Luke Clout. Thanks. I'd just like to obviously thank uh, Empire Kawasaki, um, you know, everyone that's associated with the team, 100%. Uh, Alpine star, Ford Dale, my wife, uh, Levi, my personal trainer, uh, and just everyone, my brother, he's my mechanic, everyone that helps us out, appreciate it. Good on you, Luke Clout. Jed Beaton, a bit bittersweet, mate, like literally to, to get through 16 races. Yeah. The family's here, right? Yeah, yeah. 
to get through 16 races, be drawn on points and know that you left nothing on the table, but you're still in second place. It's, it's a little bit bittersweet, but it's pretty impressive, mate. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, myself and Kyle, we had our own good races and bad races all year. So, uh, yeah, we ended up tied on points. And, I mean, I'm disappointed about it, but I'm going to keep my head held high. And uh, congrats to Kyle. He's um, rode really well all year. So, uh, yeah, that's what it takes to, uh, to get a championship. So uh, I'm sure we'll be back next year and battling it again. So, uh, yeah, I'll keep my head held high, keep working hard. And, um, yeah, hats off to the CDR team. Uh, I couldn't do it without them. They're, they're unbelievable. Um, everyone that supports me, all my family coming up, um, my girlfriend, my brother Ross, um, his crew done unreal this year and it just shows. So I think we've won every single round So uh, in both classes. So, um, yeah, hats off to him. He's done unreal with everyone. And uh, like I said, once again, thanks to the team and uh, everyone that supported me. I think it's a testament to the championship as well. Maybe your worst result was a fifth or a sixth and you still ended up second in the championship. That's how tight this thing is at the front, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I had a good run going. I didn't finish outside the top two until uh, that start crash, and which cost me a six. And, uh, yeah, detrimental to the championship. But, uh, anyway, uh, it is what it is. We'll move on. Um, today was a really good day and I uh, felt unreal on the bike. And uh, we made a plan at the start of the day and said uh, this is how we start next year. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Fantastic, Jeb Benton getting the win overall today. Gentlemen, back to you. Incredible job for the day, going 1-1. You can't do much better than that for Jed Beaton and the CDR Yamaha Monster Energy team. It was out of their hands, unfortunately, but nonetheless, a great day at the office. Let's take a look at the Thor Championship points, MX1, and how they ended up. Kyle Webster on top with 382, alongside also Jed Beaton tied on points with 382. The tie back, at the, the count back being the difference. Nathan Crawford there in third place with the 301. Uh, we've got Kirk Gibbs rounded out fourth place with 297. So yeah, Crawford made up a couple of places there in the final laps of that race and just extended that lead a little bit. He had his own dramas with some injuries as well. So a great performance for Crawford. Let's head back down to Cam who has Yurif. Yurif Konski, mate, what a red letter day for you and the, and the Honda guys. Every single championship that, that you've won. Congratulations. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's the sum of everyone uh, within our program. Without them, we, 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 we don't race. Um, it's my dad's birthday today. We lost him a few months ago. So today was super special. I, I asked him to uh, be with us today. My brother flew up, which was hard for him because he's not with his family today. And um, to Cole Webster, to Jake Cannon, to Brody Conley, to Charlie Cannon, to the rest of our team, Alex Larwood, Wilson Todd, what an amazing teammate, Noah Ferguson. I mean, the results speak. I, 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 Honda is just the most amazing brand. My dad was so proud of me to be involved in that company and to be able to give them back something in return for their efforts. Um, it's, it's really humbling. Thank you so much to Honda, to everyone else involved, to the guys from McLeod's Accessories. Lincoln's here. He's my brother, my friend, my partner with what we do, to Boost Mobile, Polyfloor, to Froth, to everyone involved, Honda Genuine. I am so, so grateful. Thanks so much for joining us here for 2024. On behalf of Danny Ham, Ken Williams and myself, Lee Hogan, thanks for your company. We'll see you in 2025.